Guys, I've been interested in home brewing for a long time and uh, never really got into it. And then a friend at work said, hey, Tim, why not make mead? I'm like, mead? What's mead made out of? Mead is made out of honey. And Tim, you've got honey. You've got your own bees, so you can make all you want. So today, we're going to make our own honey wine, our own special brew of mead, Ridge Life Brew. Mead is very easy to make. You just need some basic materials and time. That's really all you need, basic materials and time. What we've got is some um, purified water. We've got well water here on the ridge, so as long as you don't have any fluoride in it, you're good to go. Uh, you need a, small bottles to, to put your finished mead in, uh, a, a large one-gallon jug to uh, ferment. That's where we'll do our fermentation. Um, you, gotta need a, you need a funnel, you need an airlock, and you need some honey. You need some honey. I got some fresh ridge honey right here. Um, and guys, we're going to sweeten ours a little bit. We're gonna get a little bit of ridge flavor. So we've got some halos, little, those little oranges, and we've got a little bit of cinnamon, okay? And then the most important item besides your ridge, uh, making ridge farms honey is yeast. I got a special concoction of yeast right here that's gonna do the fermenting process. Start by preparing our halos. We just want to cut them into pieces that will fit down inside the, uh, the mouth of that one gallon bucket. So got to get them fairly small and then we'll squeeze the juice in there too. The rinds on these, uh, the halo, the citrus is going to give it a really nice. Now guys, you're not going to taste orange. You're not going to taste cinnamon once, once it finishes doing its uh, fermentation process. Believe it or not, um, the alcohol will take all of that out. So. Let's go ahead and finish preparing these and we will be ready. Guys, I've got honey here and there are bees flying around. I, look, okay, right there. I don't know if y'all can see it. I've got bees ready to come participate in our mead. That's pretty crazy. So what we've got, I've got a one gallon jug and I'm gonna pour it about oh, a third of the way full of, again, sanitized well water. Oh, this is good making Ridge Farms well water. You can't beat it. Man, this is good stuff. Now, um, it's it's a little bit more than room temperature. It's going to help the uh, uh, the dissolving process. All right, got about a third full there. Now it's time to get our honey. Ooh, this is this year's honey, and I can't wait to get it poured in. And then we'll, so let's, let's watch it mix in. Ooh, look at that, guys. We're going to do three pounds of this honey. Get it mixed in. Guys, doesn't that look scrumptious? Wow, look at that all mixing in there like that. That is so cool. Guys, look on the uh, honey jug right there. I've got a bee landed on it. I don't want to get that in my mead. Come on, little girl. You need to go away there. Come on, go away. There you go. Get her out of here. Let's go ahead and get, we're going to do again, three pounds of honey. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll weigh that out here in just a second. I know how much this jug weighed. Get that mixed in, then we'll start to uh, shake it up. Now we've got our honey in there. It's time to get our citrus in. We're going to again squeeze it, drop it. Squeeze it, drop it. This is going to what? Give it a little extra Ridge Life kick. And this is going to we'll get it all mixed up in there. Oh, I can't wait to try this. It takes a while for this process, guys, making mead. But it is so worth it. So, so worth it. All of our halos have been entered in. Now it's time for a little bit of extra kick. I got just a little bit of cinnamon here, ground cinnamon. I'll put that right in on top of there. Not too much, you don't wanna overpower it. Then of course, we've got the most important thing, our yeast mixture, okay? This is our yeast mixture. 
get this added in there. Now for the fun part. We get to shake all this up, get it unified, get all that honey mixed in there, get those, get that yeast dissolved, get those that citrus making its beautiful flavor in there. Oh, come on, baby. Get it going. Now for the final step before we let it start its fermenting process. We gotta get our stopper in the top there and get our airlock. And our airlock, all it does is allow for the carbon dioxide that is gonna be produced as that yeast interacts with that sugar. It's gonna release that carbon dioxide. It's gonna float up through and release out. You don't wanna just leave it open to air because then bacteria and all those little bad things can get in there. So this airlock, we put some water in it up to a level there and it creates a air void. The bubbles will float through it as the carbon dioxide is made. It's a pretty cool process. Let's get this filled up to the line right there and get our top, oh, it floats right up. Pretty cool thing, get that on top of there. And guys, we are ready to get this off in a cold, a warm, dark place. I, I definitely don't want it cold. Colder will slow the fermentation process down. Warm, dark place, 75 to 85 degrees is perfect. So if you're over at your grandma's house, you know, it's always like 75 degrees in there. Perfect place to keep this. But next to a, a, a a heater or a hot water heater somewhere off in a warm, warm place. Perfect place. Now the bubbles will start to come up. Uh, when you start seeing those, that bubble process, that's that fermentation taking place. Those bubbles are pretty cool as you start to see that. It will happen within, you know, tomorrow probably I'll start to see the big bubbles coming up. So mead guys, mead. This is what mead looks like. A coworker of mine who had told me about mead in the first place gave me some of his and it is delicious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know how to explain the taste of mead or honey wine. It's not like a grape juice wine you've had before. Definitely not like a beer or, or a, a liqueur or, an, or a, a, a bourbon or anything. This stuff is pretty, pretty cool. So let's take a drink of it and uh, see how it tastes uh, for your viewing pleasure. Now, let's get a wine glass and pour our mead. Yeah, no, we don't do wine glasses with mead, guys. What we're gonna use is an ox horn. If you're gonna be a Viking, you gotta drink your mead from an ox horn. Oh yeah, let's do this now. Let's pour our mead into our ox horn. Oh yeah! Let's see here. What do you gotta say? Skull! Oh yeah! We've had our mixture fermenting for about three weeks now, and the bubbles have really started to slow down. Now we kept this in a dark room. We used a space heater set to 77 degrees, so it regulated 77 degrees. About 75 to 78 would be ideal for this, um, for this mixture, and man, it kept it bubbling. It just bubble, 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 bubble. We had lots of bubbles. Uh, check the video out right here. Look at all these bubbles uh, as we were fermenting. Really, really cool stuff. So uh, we are ready. I, it, it is slowed down enough. We are ready to what's called a cold crash. We're going to put this mixture in the refrigerator. And what that's going to do, it's going to slow all any yeast that's left in there to, uh, to react with the sugars. It's just going to drop them out. Going to just kill them, drop them to the bottom. And those droppings are called lees. Okay, the, that's what everything, the, the, the reacted yeast, uh, leaves lees. I don't know why they call it lees, but that's what they do. So, and normally you can just put this right in your refrigerator. Uh, if, if it doesn't fit with your um, airlock on there, you can just take the airlock off and put a balloon over it. You don't want to close the lid for sure because any uh, CO2 that does continue to get created will cause your bottle to explode and that's not good. So, uh, it won't fit in our refrigerator with the airlock on, so I'm just going to put a balloon on it, keep an eye on it, and release the CO2 every once in a while if needed. But I think this thing is pretty, pretty much done. Now, what it does, the yeast it, um, interacts with the sugars and creates alcohol. Once the alcohol level gets up to a certain level, it kills off the yeast. So it kind of stops itself at a certain level. Now, you can stop it earlier uh, to get a, um, a more sweet, less dry um, wine or mead. Uh, I like mine pretty sweet, but you can always back sweeten as well. When you're all done, get it all racked into bottles or uh, before you bottle it, you can uh, sweeten it to taste as well if you don't like a really dry wine or mead. So what we've got 
is a pre-sanitized, another gallon jug. Now you can put this right in there with the, the orange and everything. I'm, I'm gonna pour it out into here so that way I don't have any of the oranges in there when I go to rack it into bottles. I don't want all those oranges and stuff in there. So just give me, I'm, I'm, I'm going straight to this jug here and then into the refrigerator. Now to sanitize everything, guys, I've been using star sand. Uh, star sand you can get off Amazon and this this will make about a bazillion gallons This is industrial for cleaning surfaces of restaurants and all that stuff. Uh, it's a very very good. No rinse sanitizer I still rinse it off, but um, Pretty good stuff here and you don't take much read the follow the directions for how much you're making and I sanitize the, the funnel the airlock the bottles everything and the yeast we're using Guys, you're like, hey Tim, what kind of yeast can you use? Can you use brewer's yeast baker's yeast? Um, I think you can use whatever yeast you want. Some people say, oh, no, you got to use a special brewer's yeast to make this wine perfectly. Whatever. But um, what I've got here is uh, Bruzy, Bruzy's yeast that comes very convenient in a package right here. You pop it open, you pick, you pour it in, it does this thing. You saw I had a little scoop. And what it is, it's from um, uh, GetBruzy.com. Uh, it makes it very, very easy. It comes with the airlock, the bottle. I got a starter kit and it comes with the bottles and all that stuff. And then you can just buy more of these packages if you want. So pretty cool stuff. So what we're going to do is get this poured into there. So I've already got everything nice and ready. So I'll take the airlock off. We'll see what this smells like. Oh, okay. Put that down right there. It'll be all right. Ooh, I still smell the citrus. I used four of those halos. I probably could have got by with two. I may actually get a citrus flavor in mine. This is the recipe I'm starting now. Um, I did do a little taste test about a, two weeks into it. Ooh, it was tasting so good. Um, but yeah, I may, may just do two halos next time, but I did four. Uh, but let's go ahead and get this poured into here. I got to pour it slowly, right? And, uh, oh, guys smells so good i just can't wait to taste this guys oh my goodness ooh, 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 ooh. coming out a little quicker than i wanted to we've got all of it poured into there i didn't want the the lees to come out in it, so i stopped a little soon and if you look at the bottom of the jug look at all that stuff in the bottom there that's the lees that's the the yeast that's interacted with the sugars and dropped out of solution uh, so i don't want that in there and what's going to happen is you see this is very opaque now it's a lot more opaque because i use so much halos the citrus there uh, if you don't use those it's going to be less opaque when you start but right now it's very very opaque and all that's going to settle it's going to clarify you can add a clarifier uh, they make a clarifier that help uh, drop all the uh, solids out of solution but i'm just going to use time i'm, I'm going to leave it in the refrigerator to cold crash all that drops out for about two days i'll check it and then i may end up um, uh, bottling it again uh, into it and back into this one after I sanitize it. Again, you, you don't have to do this. It's the way I like to do it. I bring it back into there, get it as clear and clear as I can, and then I will rack it into bottles and make some mead. Oh, yes. And guys, mead gets better with time, and I'll show you that as we go. So let's get the balloon on here. Oops. Let's get the balloon on here, and then we can get it into... Here we go, see the balloon is right top. Get this in the refrigerator, let it cold crash for at least two days. We've had our meat in the refrigerator for a couple of days and look how clear it is. All of the leaves have settled to the bottom and it, it is, it's still a little opaque, but man, it is much, much clearer than it was. Again, this is just over two days. So we're going to uh, use our another gallon jug here. We're gonna siphon it out rack it it's called racking it from this bottle to that bottle leave all the lees at the bottom yeah pun intended and probably just do this one time and after that it will be bottling mm. we can see here i've got a white balloon on it uh, the first day i put it in i pulled it out to check something and i, I ripped a hole in the, in the red balloon the red balloon had blown up a little bit but once it cooled down in the refrigerator uh, you can see there's hardly any gas been created at all again that is very, very clear compared to remember how opaque that was before. So we, we have our sanitized one gallon bucket. Let's go ahead and take off the uh, balloon. We'll reuse that after this first racking. I've got a tube here. 
and I'm going to siphon this off. And uh, there's different siphoning mechanisms you can use without you know, just you pump it up and down and it starts to siphon. I'm going to use the old method right here and uh, it will be just fine. Uh, I'll use my hand to uh, keep the germs off of the tube. So I don't want to make sure I want to make sure that I don't get the tube all the way down into the leaves. So just into the liquid there and I'm going to regulate the flow into our one gallon jug. Is it going? Oh, almost. There it goes. Oh, that tasted so good. I got a taste of it. Oh my goodness. And it's coming down. We can see it filling up. Oh, that looks so clear, guys. So clear. I stopped about halfway through. You can see some of the leaves that started getting up into there. I'll let that settle out and siphon off the rest. But look how clear that is, guys. Look how beautiful crisp and clear and again i tasted a little bit when i was siphoning there you don't want to do that but it was delicious way much better than it was before with all that yeasty taste so we'll get this uh, finished racking out today we'll do a couple more days rack it out into our bottles and we'll come back for a taste test so we let our once racked mead settle in the refrigerator again for a couple more days and more has settled to the bottom guys there's more of a line at the bottom there yeah, so now we're going to hopefully bottle a racket for the last time into these bottles here. These are our uh, long-term use bottles. We'll cork them off and let these age. Guys, one thing about mead or wine, when you first ferment it, you first rack it off, yes, it, it may be wine, but it takes age to make it taste good. So it may taste okay when you first rack it, but let it sit in the refrigerator. Let it sit in there for days, weeks, months, and it will get so, so much better. Um, another thing you gotta remember, guys, is it may still develop a little fermentation, so if you're gonna cork it, make sure you uh, check it every once in a while, uncork it, because you don't want anything blowing up. But you know, as many times as we've racked and let this settle, uh, I, I'm not getting much fermentation, especially in the cold. If you leave it out in, in the open, uh, it may be too warm. Any yeast in there may interact with the sugar. Speaking of sugar, if you don't like how it tastes, if it's a little too dry, meaning not sweet enough, you can back sweeten it, meaning you can add more honey to it, more whatever sweetener you like. And you can also add the flavoring. Of course, you know, we did our, our citrus at the beginning. Of course, we used honey and a little bit of cinnamon there. So I, I'm hoping this is going to be just fine. So let's get this. Uh, siphoned into our smaller container. I'm gonna use the old mouth siphon again. I know I'm gonna get so much hate in the comments. Oh, you're putting germs in and everything. So uh, yes, I should buy one of the automatic siphoners, but right now I'm using this. Oh, wow. <laughs> so good. So, so good. Filling it up. Stop that right there. There we go. Doesn't that look beautiful? I mean, look at the color on that. And it's much, much clearer than we originally started with. Um, we get the rest of these bottled up and then we'll do a final taste test. Look at this beautiful mead, guys. This is honey wine. Look at the color on that. Isn't that just gorgeous and light? Uh, it's not quite perfectly clear. It is still continue to settle some more. Again, you can rack these as many times as you want if there are any more leaves that fall to the bottom. Um, guys, let's do a taste test. I've already got some poured out. And guys, if you're going to drink mead, honey wine, the way the Vikings did it, you need to do it out of an ox horn. That's right, an ox horn. Um, I poured a little bit into here. Let's see what it tastes like. Ooh, don't need a back sweeten at all. It's still got a lot of sweetness. I don't like a real dry, I don't like dry at all. Um, the cinnamon was just on point. I wouldn't add any more cinnamon or any less. Um, the citrus, I could probably go a little, a little less halos, but, the, but it turned out great. And the key, again, with this honey wine, guys, is time. If it tastes decent now, Give it three months and this stuff is gonna be awesome. So make sure you share it with friends. You can make it in five gallon buckets if you want. Get a lot more than these three bottles. I probably could have got more than three bottles, uh, but I didn't want any of those leaves entrained into our, my wine as I was siphoning it out. Again, use a much better siphon than the old suck method. You know, that was 
definitely not the way to do it. Um, but you know, the hose method works just fine. You can buy one of the mechanical siphons and then you'll get perfect cleanliness. So guys, very, very good. If you like today's how to make honey, honey wine or mead, Subscribe to Ridge Life. Uh, this is Ridge Life's reviews and how to's. I do all kinds of uh, product reviews and how to's. Or go over and check out our main channel where we do the homesteading, the hunting, fishing, uh, building, all kinds of farm animals, good stuff over there on Ridge Life as well. So, guys, if you if you can, I sure appreciate a big old thumbs up on today's video. Again, uh, make sure you subscribe right down there. Until next time, I hope everyone has a blessed, blessed day and Skull! Have a blessed day. Go Ridge Life. I'm going to use the mouth siphon again, guys. I know I'm going to get so many hates in the comments, but uh, it works. Um, and just make sure you don't get it in your mouth. It goes back into the bottle. But, of course, if you buy one of the automatic siphoners, you know, the little machines, great, great. I'm using this tube, so. There we go. Get that going. Oh, yeah. Look at there, guys. Oh, did I stop it? I stopped it.